Hello and welcome to our brand new adolescent sexual reproductive health program. What does YOLO mean to me? My name is Quince Danefi, popularly known as Emily, and I'm your host for today's show. YOLO is a TV serial that deals with adolescent sexual reproductive health issues and encourages young people to adopt positive lifestyle behaviors to help them enjoy a good life. Remember, you can also enjoy a good life by sleeping in an insecticide-treated mosquito net to prevent malaria. Also, during this COVID era, we must be cautious to stay safe. Always wash your hands with soap and the running water. Not hug or shake hands with people. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid touching your mouth and your face. Ensure you maintain a physical distance of about two meters between you and others whenever you're in public. Avoid overcrowded areas. In the YOLO TV series, characters are seen experiencing a variety of challenging issues which affect their decisions as far as their adolescent sexual reproductive health is concerned. All woven together in a fun, entertaining and educative manner to keep you at the edge of your seat. I am sure you have watched all the episodes and I am definitely sure you have marked out your favourite characters and scenes. Watch this. Charlie, YOLO, what's up? Charlie, do you make say two hours when you see? It's almost three. Charlie, still no shoe. Remember, I'm not the only one the kids call thief. Oh, Massa, see, this girl, she defuse you. See, the kid is tough card and do it uh, favor all. Why you know this girl before? Eh? This be blessing in disguise. I didn't tell you. So you are telling me that we should let them go scot free. Charlie, like you forgive this girl, oh. Hey! You see that thing? Charlie. I make wild, I need to, I make wild. See, I make wild for nine double. Ah, that boy, see, as I do, do this condition, you two for look sharp. Me, I, I tell you, say the girl should defy you. The way that she despise you, nah, as you say, the girl should defy you. So, if you look sharp, man. Here on What Does YOLO Mean to Me, we get to meet you, the fans, to discuss what YOLO means to you as an individual and the impact that TV serial has had on your life. We also touch on a few adolescent sexual reproductive health issues highlighted. I have me five young people to join in the discussion and I'll let them introduce themselves. Hi guys, my name is Ziva and this is what YOLO means to me. YOLO means you only live once, so you have to live life to the fullest and you also have to stay safe while you're still young and you're still energetic. I'm Priscilla Sewama and this is what YOLO means to me. I like the fact that it teaches about abstinence and the use of contraceptives. I also like the fact that it talks about mental health and healthy living. I go by the name Ruth and as you all know, YOLO is you only live once. It has really impacted my life in so many ways because that taught me how to abstain and even if I'm supposed to indulge myself in any sexual activities, how to protect myself. It has also helped me to control the way I relate around my peers and help me avoid some bad influences. Hi guys, my name is Janelle and literally YOLO means you only live once. From YOLO, I learned to abstain from sex, I learned to live a good life and it has really impacted on my life. This is Nouvelle Ash. YOLO has been a very exciting program, an educative program. One thing I've realized so far is that you can see yourself in every character. Like you see that your friends or yourself in one specific character and then you see the things they took. If if it ended them well, you can take the same right turn. And if it ended wrong, you choose the next one. And so far, I think YOLO has done the best in teaching me a lot. Our first topic of discussion is peer pressure. But before that, let us watch snapshots of previous scenes from YOLO. She did for you long time. If there's that thing she did do, make no mind up, eh? What you buying? You already know where my heart is. Where? Emily. Uh... <laughs> I've been using the Emily girl there. It'll be a long time project, eh? I for go, 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 then do some plenty research. This one be Instagram. Bruh! You they feel? I think she did be. You they feel her? Yeah, she's, but she's shy. Hey! Who tell you? You can not talk what you don't know. As youth of today, what makes some of us open to influence by our peers? Most of the youth of today, we are all ignorant, we are curious. Most of us are adventurous and we want to explore and discover new things. So this exposes us to the influence of our peers. Sometimes I get more curious to listen to them, to hear what they have to say about certain topics. Some of our friends show us things they have and since we don't have certain things, we feel like we want to just mingle with them and then get to know how they got it and also have those things. So they love for the things our friends have. So anything they say, you want to do it because you want to be like they want to have the things they have. So basically, I think that's how our friends get to influence us. My peers influence me because they do 
some stuff like they have boyfriends, they have sex. And then I'm a youth, I'm a young girl, and then I'm curious and I want to know. So curiosity kills the cat. <laughs> Very interesting. But can't we make our own decisions? Or our friends are just more adventurous and vibrant? We can definitely make our own decisions. But if like our friends are adventurous and vibrant, then you can just let them go first or do whatever they want. Then you can now follow or you can just like decide not to do it or you can definitely make your own decisions. So literally my friends are really adventurous. They actually make you want to do it the negative stuff. They go so much into details <laughs> about the stories and everything. Let's say into drugs. They tell you that drugs makes you high, it makes you feel good, and then it makes you actually want to do it. But then, I don't. Sometimes I think it's both. You can actually make your own decisions, but sometimes you need to hear what your friends too have to say so you can weigh options you go for. Our friends are only trying to put us in their shoes and we can't fit in that. Actually, no one can fit in anyone's shoes. So we should make our own decisions. We don't need to just follow our friends just like that. How has the COVID situation influenced the decisions you've made so far? Especially when schools were closed down and you had to be homeschooled. I get to learn more and do more research on the internet and I try to stay safe and follow the precautions so as to desist from contracting the disease. Taking from the fact that we went on lockdown, we had plans, we had things we wanted to do during the year. So because of the lockdown, we couldn't go out. We all trying to stay safe and then help others also stay safe. Some of our plans that we wanted to achieve couldn't come on. I don't really get to see my friends when I don't go out. It hasn't really affected me negatively. Has COVID-19 affected the way we relate to our friends? COVID has affected my relationship with my friends because I don't really get to see them. I don't talk to them anymore. So it has affected the relationship. Because you have to stay safe and all that. So you don't get close. You don't meet up as you used to meet. So sometimes you just stay in the and more of social media. So, yes. COVID-19 has really affected the way I really go about with my friends. Because at first we used to go out, have fun, play video games. But now everything is on a lockdown, including our video games. As a young person, has COVID-19 put more pressure on us to want to succumb to peer pressure? Yes, it has. I'm at home. I get tempted to do stuff because I don't get to see my friends and all. And then sitting at home makes you think about all they used to say, the drugs, the sex, the relationship and everything. So it actually wants you to do some like boredom. <laughs> want to dig in some more. Yes. In my way, I would think COVID has not put any pressure on us that much. It has even helped us in a way. For instance, when I go out with my friends, there are things they introduce to me. Based on COVID-19, I don't go out with them that much and they don't get that chance to introduce such things, especially the negative vibes and stuff. COVID-19 has not put any pressure on me because I'm always at home. Having fun, our next topic of discussion is abstinence. Check out these scenes from YOLO. Hey, boo. Oh, yes, we are fine. Yeah, we're, we're fine. <sighs> So you see you have a boyfriend, but you don't want me having a boyfriend. I never said so. <laughs> well, all those working there before me had boyfriends, and they all got sacked. Even though she doesn't admit it, I suspect Auntie Mina would have sacked me, me Lydia, if I had a boyfriend who was coming around the shop. But I come to think of it, I'm still young. Why? Can't I also have fun with a guy? <clears throat> what is so good about having a boyfriend? Tell me. Mm. <laughs> if I say it, eh? <clears throat> say it. You know what I mean? No, I don't know what you mean. Say it. Yeah, I'm shy of your boyfriend though. What, sex? Uh huh. <laughs> Nicholas and I don't have sex. Huh? Yeah, it's true. You can ask him. You know when I ever heard you telling my madam, I thought you were lying. No? Abstaining till marriage. You two can have sex if you are faithful to each other. And I know you are faithful, Araba. So, yes. so what are you waiting yes, for? Yes, and it's a choice. Aside that, at our age, I don't think we are ready to handle problems that come with sex. Do you think that love is all about sex? I think it's not all about sex because love is about passion. 
it's about how you feel for someone. But then when you put sex into it, it's like your love life is all about sex, which is wrong. No, I don't think love is all about sex. Because it's just a feeling, it's just an expression of how you care about someone. It's not necessarily how to do it, physical or sexual activities. I don't really think love is about sex. Because when you love someone, it's all about spending good times, having good memories, just sharing fun times and just moving on with the person. Normally we think sex is love and I don't think sex should be related to love. Do you also think that once you've had sex, it becomes difficult to abstain? Once you've had sex, you might be tempted to always go back to indulging in sexual acts. So you find it very difficult to abstain. So I think when you have sex for the first time, it will be hard to abstain because you get tempted to do it again. When you have sex, it's really difficult to abstain because the feeling, I think for the first time, the feeling is some way exciting, especially for guys. So they always want to engage in that act. Are there advantages to abstinence? Advantages of abstaining. You get to continue your education, no teenage pregnancy, no boyfriends, no problems. There are advantages to abstinence because when you abstain, you would find it very hard contracting sexual transmitted diseases from sexual activities. Well, if you can't abstain, what do you do? If you cannot abstain, you sleep. And if you can't sleep, use condoms. It's that simple. If you can't abstain, then you go by the contraceptive option or the use of condom. Don't be shy. Just go to the pharmacist and then tell the person you are good to go. Well, you've heard what they have to say. Let's listen to what some of our fans in other parts of the country have to say about this topic. What's up, what's up? My name is Agamemnon Imanon from Otu region in Kwanta. Yeah, you has impacted me a lot. It has helped you to abstain from sex. The first question is, do you think love is all about sex? I'm not sure love is all about sex, yeah. Because me and my woman like this, we are abstaining from sex to marriage, yes. Okay, the second question is, do you think once you have had sex, it becomes difficult to abstain? Once you have had sex, it's sometimes difficult and it depends on the people in the relationship. The third question is, are there advantages to abstinence? Yeah, the advantages, yeah. It leads to unwanted pregnancies, unwanted pregnancies, I'm sure, I'm sure, I'm sure. The last question is, if you cannot abstain, what do you do? You should have protected sex, I'm sure. We have shared your comments with us through our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at YOLO TV series and on WhatsApp. What are your thoughts on the topics discussed so far? What makes some friends seemingly more knowledgeable or up to date about the opposite sex? That is boys and girls. Is it upbringing, parents, social media or just observing siblings? On the issue of abstinence between boys and girls, who abstains more and why? What can one do to continue to be chaste? Let us know your thoughts by sharing your comments with us via WhatsApp, text or video. Or log on to our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter to leave a comment. You never know, you might just get a message from your favorite YOLO star. The next episode of What Does YOLO Mean To Me? will be hosted by Nana Mampofa who plays the role of Ariana. Hello guys. I'm Nana Mampofwa and I'm known in YOLO as Ariana. On your next episode of What Does YOLO Mean To Me, I am going to be your host. We'll be discussing student-teacher relationships. I mean, amorous relations teachers have with their students. You know it's going to be really interesting, so be sure not to miss out. Why are you calling me by this time of the night? I just can't sleep. What has that got to do with me? The phone work you give me, it's so difficult. You, this is not the right time to talk about this and you know that. Hello, I miss you. Look, I've, I've got to go now, okay? I've got to go now. No, 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 wait. Cyril. Yeah, yes? Please tell me you miss me too, and I won't bother you again. Please. I'll just hang up and leave. Thank you for joining us on this exciting episode of What Does YOLO Mean To Me? I hope you had fun and picked up enough information to help you live a good life. Remember, in this COVID era, we need to be cautious to stay safe. Always wash your hands with soap under running water. Use hand sanitizers. Avoid touching your mouth and your face. Do not hug or shake hands with others. Always maintain a physical distance of about 2 meters with others whenever you're in a public place. Avoid overcrowded places. Make a date with us right here, same time next week. Remember, good life, live it well. Good life, it's an everyday thing. YOLO, you only live once.